Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Hope everyone's having a really cool Wednesday. So today we are, let's see, so today we are going to finish up <clears throat> this portrait here that we've been working on. It's been a lot of fun and you know everyone who has followed along, I really appreciate that. So this is the piece that we are going to be working on tonight. Maybe just uh, finishing up some loose edges, maybe some some hairs coming out, uh, maybe just darkening some areas, putting in some dark accents, something like that would be really cool. Hey Lisa, how are you today? Good to see you. And so how's how are those wonderful black and white paintings that you've been doing? Those are really fantastic. And so, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring this all together and create a, a piece that, you know, has that old master look. And then next week we're going to start something new and fresh. But it's really cool that we were able to go ahead and, you know, work on this from beginning to end. And that's very exciting. So I really enjoyed that. So today we have, <clears throat> we have uh, all our friends on Facebook and on YouTube simultaneously, which is very exciting, that's for sure. Uh, so is, these are our cameras today. We have this one, of course, and this is our main camera, main learning camera. And then we have, this is something new. I thought maybe it would be cool to get like a real interesting look on you know maybe something we don't see every day so I thought we do a camera like that just first on live streams perhaps and then of course we have this camera here which is where is that camera okay that's right here so let's see okay cool so we just get another interesting view and let me see if I could actually lower. Yeah, that looks a little better, doesn't it, guys? I think that looks better. What do you think? Okay, yeah, I like that much better. And of course, we have this, which is me. Don't want too much of that. And so we have our four cameras. And everything seems to be working out pretty well so far. So let's go ahead <clears throat> and start. And the first thing I'm gonna do is probably go ahead and maybe darken. Actually, you know what bothered me? Even though her hairs are coming out like this, you know, from her hair and is behind her hand, looking at it in retrospect for the last week, I really hate the way that looks. It's sort of like an optical illusion. It looks like hairs are coming out of her hand. So there are times when you <clears throat> have to make decisions that, let me turn off this phone here. There are times, uh, now there are times when, okay, now do you guys see this? Because, uh, I have Jacob and he says he doesn't see it, but no, I think, I, I think we do have, uh, we do have, uh, it's like a, there's like a delay, so I think that's what's happening. But yeah, we are, we are definitely online. And uh, so, so Jacob, just give it a few moments and you should uh, actually start seeing the picture. So like I said, let me go ahead and start to erase these hairs here. And that's another thing why it's so important to use the technique of... Oh, I see. Yes, Jacob. I Jacob is right. So what I have to do, as always, is I have to go ahead and change, uh, change the uh, privacy from... from private to public. 
Okay, so now you guys should see it and get rid of the double audio. Okay, cool. So that's cool. And so Lisa is on uh, YouTube. And right now, Facebook will start to be able to see it because I did have it on private. But thank you so much. Jacob, thank you so much for letting me know that you weren't seeing it. I make that mistake every week, don't I? So, yeah, so I keep forgetting to uh, go ahead and put that on from private to public. Yes, Lisa, you can definitely see. Hey, Raul, como estas? How are you, sir? Good to see you. Yeah, so if we get rid of this, uh, it's going to be much better because people looking at the drawing is not going to say, oh, there must be hair coming from the back of her hand. They're not going to see that. They're going to be like, what's going on with this drawing? So sometimes you got to make those decisions. Ah, doing well, doing well today. Uh, you know, got some things done. Uh, took care of some, some, uh, some errands. Staying busy. Been working out. That sort of thing. Hector, como estas? Muy buenas noches. And then this backhand here. I'm not sure. Letty, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming by. How you been? Oh, so cool. Uh, it was... It was... Uh, I had it set in the beginning on, on private and nobody was uh, nobody was seeing my my live stream but Jacob went ahead and told me thank God so now everybody can see it so good to see you Letty and I like to always as you know to use this uh, stump here dedicated just for the white and I now I might not even because if you see here <clears throat> you see this hand here but it might look weird I mean in the drawing you might in the photograph you might believe it but in the drawing might not ah uh, thank you so much Letty Miss you too, definitely. Oh, Raul, gracias. Very, thank you so much, Raul, for taking the time to come to my live feed. Yeah, you're right, Lisa. It was a little distracting, and I think it still is. So I'm going to make the executive decision to just go ahead and remove this. And I think that will help the artwork. And you know, just like uh, Bob Ross said, it's your world. You can do what you want, you know? And I think this works better, that's for sure. And I think if we look at this as a work of art now, it actually uh, works much better. And what I'm going to do is I need a little stronger of an eraser to, to pull up some of these lines here. But this is an aggressive eraser, so I'll use it on the paper, but I have to be very careful that I don't rip it. So that's why I'm just gonna, you know, very, very softly. And what this does, it gets rid of any indication 
of the hair and the back the back arm but definitely you know we can see that it is really working to our advantage to get rid of it sometimes drawing and painting exactly what you see is not the right thing when when doing uh, a portrait it could be a lot of different variables okay great so and let's go ahead and work on this contour back here okay so I'm very happy with that right now I think that really really works let's get our white pastel okay right here and how does the the color look is it too dark hey Kiva how are you good to see you thank you so much for coming by how are the murals going over there and right now what I'm doing is just going ahead and working on the contours making sure the hand is is looking correct anatomically same thing with the bottom hand the bottom the pinky here and then we take our mono eraser to zero the round and then let's see if we can just go ahead and indicate some of the knuckles. Right here. It's interesting. This is actually the end of the drawing. So a lot of things, this actually moves a lot faster than other, other aspects. Yes, I remember seeing the uh, two horses. The oil painting, how's that coming? And I'm gonna take this stump that's dedicated for the graphite. Remember, we have the stump dedicated for the white and the stump dedicated for the graphite. So you don't wanna mix them up. So I'm going to take the graphite stump and I'm just going to pull up some graphite from an area that already has, uh, has pencil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly draw some of the knuckles in her fingers and also make that finger turn. Yes, that, it is a good way to do that in those glazes. That's the French academic approach. And what we're doing is just giving that her fingers a real feeling of being three-dimensional. And so you can see just these little indications of shadow here. We don't got to get too, too complicated with it, but just to make that hand feel like it's turning and not cartoonish. On this drawing, uh, hey Lupita, como estas? Good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by. So as far as uh, changing the drawing, Jacob, uh, not too much. I'm just uh, basically uh, tying up loose ends and making sure that, that everything uh, looks like it's turning and everything belongs. That's very important, that everything belongs to each other. You know, let's say if I have her, her face has very nice detail 
and then the hand didn't have detail it would look out of place so I just bringing everything together as one one piece one cohesive piece of artwork and just making sure that this cast shadow looks right of her fingers So how does the actual, everything look in focus with the drawing? Everything's fine, guys? I always say being a one-man band is very difficult. It's hard to see everything. Wow, well, thank you so much, Kiva. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jacob, and I thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, good. So, oh, so Lisa, you just switched over to Facebook. You were having a little bit of problem over there on YouTube? I know they are a little bit different. Hey Cheryl, how you doing? Great to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by. So cool, so many nice people have come to my live feed today. It's such a nice honor. Good to see everybody. And what I'm going to do is just adjust this area right here. I'm going to use that stump. And I'm going to use this uh, just a little like a paintbrush. Just like that. But on, but on, but Lisa on, on Facebook, it's much better. That's interesting. Must be an issue with, uh, with YouTube right now. You know, I also do these live streams on, on, on Twitch. And if you don't have a Twitch account, guys, definitely get one. It's really great. It's not just for gaming. It started out as for gaming, but now it's for everything. It's really, really interesting. Wow, thank you so much, Lupita. I appreciate that. Now, the Cookie Couture channel, which that's uh, Lupita, and she makes some amazing cookie recipes just out of this world. If you get a chance, uh, look up the Cookie Couture channel on YouTube. You'll see she did this wonderful uh, graduate uh, graduation cookies. It was just really great, very witty and it, it just very creative oh yes definitely and what i'm going to do is sort of work out some whoop, i gotta make sure i put my hand here remember you always want to put that piece of paper because if your hand actually touches the paper we all have oils no matter how much we wash our hands we all gonna have oils in our hands. So what we do is we make sure that we have the paper to actually protect. So that's very crucial. So I, I went to get a haircut today, which was uh, just in time. Hey, Wendy, good to see you. So glad you're here. I was in desperate need of a haircut. It was really bad. Uh, I get it every six weeks, but like week five, day six, it just isn't good. So I feel much better that I got my haircut today. I went to the farmer's market, got some, got some juice, uh, you know, some, some vegetables for the juice. And that was pretty good. 
I guess on a on a Wednesday afternoon, it's really not that busy, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. So, Letty, did you get your juicer yet? Because I know you're waiting on your juicer. And there's always a delay. Uh, I think that is not my internet connection because my my internet connection is like really fast. It's like a gigabyte. But I think there's a delay from from YouTube and Facebook uh, from my computer software. But that's okay. It's good. And Lupita, how are your your uh, your cookie uh, your cook? How's your cookie channel going? Any uh, new project uh, down the line that we should know about? Oh yes, I know. I know you have that 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 really ex beautiful one. So that's really cool. So you definitely have to organize that, and you know it's it is a lot of work. That's for sure. Juicing is a lot of work. Today I spent about 20 minutes just preparing, cutting everything up, and making the juice all together, 11 minutes. But I'll tell you, I feel better. And uh, even if, if you know, you're ever feeling down or just sluggish, that just really just skyrockets. Skyrockets your metabolism, and you just feel great. So right here there's a little more of a contrast here and that will actually help to turn the form of her nose the bottom of her nose uh, oh it definitely is worth it I I love juicing you know if I wasn't an artist I think I would do a juicing channel but I really can't do two things, you know, you have to keep your channel uh, pretty much one thing, they say, otherwise you would lose subscribers, and so that kind of, kind of stinks. I do the frozen fruit, it's really great, and I do make the smoothies, and I, I like doing that, uh, but as far as, like, as far as nutrition and getting that nutrition in your body, Juicing definitely is, for me and my body, is really the way to go. But yes, you definitely, for breakfast, you can do some really amazing smoothies. That's for sure. But as you can see, just going ahead, and yes, peaches are very good for you. Just by going ahead and darkening up, now this is the Terminator. Remember, where you have the the light, and as the light hits the f the form where it's most facing you. Hey, Denise, how's it going? Good to see you. And as your as the form turns away, it gets darker. But the moment where the form is not where the light is actually passing by the form. That's called your terminator. That's your darkest area. And then after that, it starts getting lighter because then it starts picking up the reflected light. So it's light, rolls gets darker, goes to the terminator, and then rolls gets darker towards the reflected light. So always remember that. And that will really help you to make sure that what you're working on has that quality of three dimensions. Remember, we're drawing light. We're not really, we're not just drawing a person, but we're drawing the form of that person, the physical form of that person, and how light affects it. Hey, Cyrus, good to see you. 
and so very cool and then right here we do have a little bit of a turning of the form here so I definitely want to go ahead and indicate that and here at this stage you want to try and gain texture and texture is uh, that missing ingredient that's gonna take this drawing to the next level I see a lot of paintings and drawings where everything sort of all the values are, are the right but it's that texture and that texture is really really the sort of the icing on the cake see how we're making that nose nose turn so that's really good yes it's the uh, the elements of a three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional form is always going to help you and and I and I every every day almost I always go over that and always make sure that I'm seeing everything that I'm drawing or painting as a three-dimensional object in space and then I get a feeling as in this drawing you know it comes together you get a feeling of the light as it actually is hitting her and moving across her and not just one area not just this eye but also her nose and her lips and her fingernail and her shoulder so you really get a feeling almost like a wave on an ocean cuts across her it's the same way that the light is cutting across her so that's always good to remember look at the work of Johannes Vermeer he will definitely uh, show you in his paintings how how crucial it is to have that feeling of light uh, you know it, it sort of gives it a sort of romantic look I think exactly and that's exactly it and I think texture just happens from time and uh, just you know letting the drawing happen and then from there you know it comes together at the end and for me I gotta make sure I'm not trying to get texture too early so we have this stray hair here and that's And what we're going to do is the hair sort of kind of fades away here. So we're not going to do like a strong dark hair all the way. We'll, we'll have it dark here. And then the hair sort of disappears. That gives a good feeling. Same thing here. We're going to have some stray hairs. And then we'll take this and see if we can't do some of the negative spaces. Just like that. Same thing here. We have some stray hairs. And these little touches is really something that is going to take it from being a nice drawing to wow how did he or she do that that's what we want to do Whoop. we have this really cool angle here It's nice that we could get from so many different different angles and to see it in a different way. And I think that's important because when we look at things from a different angle, we definitely can see, oh, that looks good, that looks bad, or maybe I can change something. So it's always good to look at things from a different perspective. 
I like this angle. It's pretty cool. So one of these days I'm going to pick up. Uh, one of these days I want to pick up a second DSLR, sort of do like a far away shot, and that would probably be really cool. Just to take the, uh, just to go ahead and take these live streams to the next level. And let's face it, it's all competition, right? You, you know, anything that we're in, it's, there's a competition. Uh, and the same thing with live streams. You know, I definitely want my live streams to be the best out there. To be not only, of course, with the content, but also I want to make sure that the live streams uh, are better than the other ones out there in, in, my, in my field. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, these angles are really fantastic. Uh, you know, they re and they help the drawing process and the teaching prospect. I, I think if I just had one angle, uh, you know, it's so funny, uh, Lisa, that you should say that. I don't draw on a flat surface. Uh, I draw up and down on a vertical surface in my, you know, for my own artwork. But for teaching purposes, I kind of switched for you guys. And that was kind of difficult at first. And, but, you know, sort of, it forced me to go outside of my comfort zone. So it's cool. So, yeah, I would much rather work up and down because then you see the work in perfect perspective as opposed to having it sort of, you know, on a flat plane. I'm not seeing it like... I'm seeing it in perspective, so that's definitely, definitely. How about yourself? Do you like working flat? Well, thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for always commenting and being part of the, of the community. And that's what I'm uh, really trying to, uh, trying to create a community. Uh, Oh, uh, well, thank you, Wendy. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just... Uh, I, I want this whole live stream to be about, about you guys, about, uh, about the community, and about, you know, what would be the best learning solutions. Uh, how, can, how can we come, come away with this with you guys have a knowledge of the new materials and uh, trying it on your own. That makes me happy when you guys go ahead and try it on your own. Yeah, I, I do like the, I do like as well having the, uh, the straight up and down vertical surface. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to have a drafting table my parents had gotten me a drafting table and that was fantastic. Uh, so I worked on that for many years. But it wasn't until I went to the High School of Art and Design and then subsequently I went to the National Academy School of Fine Arts and it was all easel work. And at first that was quite the uh, adjustment for me. And a lot of my students when they a lot of my students, when they go ahead and, and go into my studio and I'm like, you need to paint up and down, it is an adjustment for them too. Oh, so, well, thank you. That's so great to hear that I was able to help you, uh, Jacob. And yeah, your color work's going really well. Oh, well, your, your, your work is really good, uh, Lisa. And, you know, I really love what you're doing. Uh, you know, I think your portraits uh, have a lot of life to them. Very exciting. And, as, and I want you all to notice how I switch from the materials. 
then it's almost like second nature going from one to another you know the six b to the to the mono eraser to the mechanical pencil back to the stump that sort of you know if you do this often uh you can you can do this uh You can do this like when you're waiting for a bus or you're, you know, at a dental office or something. If you have your drawing with you, I always bring my reference and I have my drawing material and my paper. And I just go to town no matter where I am. If I'm there for like a half hour anyway, I might as well get some drawing in. And if I always have these materials, then I'm always using them. And over the years, these materials definitely are the best solution for drawing in this manner. With, this, uh, with the gray paper and the white pastel and the graphite, the materials, if you stick with that and grow with those materials, it's, it's just amazing. Yes, exactly. Uh, you definitely want to let go and uh, let it happen. And... Uh, when you're working on a painting or drawing, and I, 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 we spoke about this, Wendy, that you never want to get emotional uh, if it's not coming out okay. You always want to step back and, and let it happen. And I, and I said that to you as well, Lisa. Don't get emotional about it. Just let it occur. And, uh, and then it, it usually works out. Oh, sure. Now, do you want to see... Uh, hey, Willie, how you doing? Good to see you. Willie over there in, uh, in uh, YouTube. I appreciate that. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, now, we can do this angle here. Let's see. And I'll even do something really cool for you guys here. Let's see. Whoa. Extreme close-up. Let me see. We're getting a little bit of maybe the different angles here. But I think I can probably get a better angle with this one. Not that I know how I'll do it. Let's see, Kiva. This way. And as you can see... The work is when you get close up gets a lot of texture and it just comes together when you know from far away and that is uh, that's that the whole optical illusion we're sort of like you know as realistic painters uh, you know drawing and pastels we really are Ooh, look at this okay we really are uh, illusionists, right? We're sort of sleight of hand using using marks done with graphite and white pastel to make it look like reality. So uh, it's really interesting. You know that shine is really rough, definitely. And what you have to do, and uh, you know, economy of the surface, of course. But you might have to, sometimes if I'm working and I do overload the surface, that does happen, I will definitely move the light around. And then by moving the light around, uh, you get, definitely you can reduce some of that glare. So let's just see, like, like here you see a certain amount of glare up here. But on a different angle, you see no glare whatsoever. So it, it all depends on whatever angle you're at. That really makes a big difference, Lisa. I mean, uh, Wendy, definitely. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we could turn the form on her forehead a little bit. And this is all, these are all finishing touches. <laughs> that does happen. 
you know it's so easy when I started doing this technique back I would say like really full force doing this technique I was I was very overzealous with the 6b and a lot of the pictures you know when you photograph them oh my god they were shiny as anything and then I just you know over time I realized that you know it's plenty of time to go dark so we got to make sure we don't go dark too early Wow, thank you, Kiva. I appreciate that. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. Definitely let me know if there's anything in the live stream that I can definitely make it better or explain it more. So I really appreciate that. And where her forehead is and it turns, it definitely is affected by that. Those. So right here, again, you have the Terminator and then it gets lighter as it moves towards the light it gets lighter and lighter but notice that it isn't like a straight line it's it meanders in and out oh Hector como esta senor so it says Uh, so Hector, it says here in Spanish, I just want to say here that uh, sometimes uh, that my work isn't sufficiently good, uh, but the problem is uh, a lot of people uh, say that I would know that. I'm not sure. Hector, uh, puedes hablar uh, tu pregunta en inglés, por favor? So I'm not too sure. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not too sure exactly uh, what you mean by that, Hector. I, you know, and I do apologize. But like the translation from, from the Spanish to the English, it says that uh, my work isn't sufficiently good. Uh, the, the, the problem of, uh, of, of what they say of being fake uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure I'm getting that translation wrong, so I do apologize. You're a good guy. I know. I, I know it's a very good question. But uh, if you can say that question, Hector, in English, that would be great. So. Oh. Oh. Yes. So, Hector, no problema. It's. It's. Your work, tu trabajo es muy bien, and no necesita, como dice, pensar mucho. Solamente uh, dibujar y pintar todos los días, and tu estás bien. Oh, all the time, Hector, all the time I feel that way. I, I work very hard. Uh, sometimes... Uh, Gloria how are you sometimes when I you know I things don't I don't get the technique as quick as possible or I'm having problem with something I do feel that I should be learning faster but that's okay when I get that Hector uh, I like to just buckle down and work harder and I I make sure I don't think about that too long because that's not that's not good thinking. Gracias por tu pregunta, señor. Lo siento, mi español es estoy aprendiendo la lengua, pero ahorita estoy uh, aprendiendo todavía. Bien, gra bien gracias, Gloria. ¿Cómo estás tú? So we have so many great people here today, and I'm so excited about it. We have some really great people. Oh, oh gracias, Hector. We, we have uh, Hector and Lupita. 
over there on uh, YouTube. We have Willie. Uh, so we have a nice group. Uh, thank you so much for everybody on YouTube and also Facebook. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. It's a lot of fun. And now, uh, basically, I'm just starting to really go in with the Oh, see, si, igualmente, Hector. Uh, you know, yo, yo puedo, uh, yo puedo uh, escribirlo muy bien, pero alguna vez no. Pero me encanta uh, el español. Pero yo, yo necesito practicar mucho más. Yo necesito hablar más y escribir más en español. Porque en algún día yo voy a visitar eh, España. ¿Y de dónde es usted? Eh, Héctor, tú eres uh, de uh, Chile, ¿no? Chilean. Last night I did a very quick impromptu uh, live stream. It was like around 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh, that's great. Muy bien. Estoy muy, muy contenta. Estoy muy contento que uh, Hector que practicaremos juntos. <laughs> Chile es un buen país. Chile está... Uh, Chile es en el Copa de Mundial. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 6B and I'm going to try and do a few things here and there to create some dark accents. And I think that's going to just bring things together. Maybe create a little bit more emotion. Because this is a very emotional photograph. The model, uh, Angela, is just amazing. She's just an amazing model. She's always so gracious to pose for me. Models are so important. They really make the difference. We can't do it without them. Oh, lo siento por eso, Hector. Tal vez en cuatro años. Lo siento. Oh, muy bien, Lisa. Y tú estás uh, practicando el, el idioma también. Sí, yo tengo el, uh, el, pre, el, el programa de Rosetta Stone y yo necesito usarlo mucho más. Let's go ahead and hit some of those really dark accents in the eyes. Let's go ahead and see if we could zoom in on her eye here. really go in there and see if we can create some depth because remember when we always say that every drawing has a uh, every drawing and painting has a star just like a movie and so the star is definitely her eyes <coughs> I think it's a very good program and I think it's something that's a, it's a different form of learning. It's more like uh, learning visually, which is very interesting. A lot of people 
learn quicker that way with Rosetta Stone. If I if I see it correctly, you know it's so interesting that you say that and that question. So Willie over in uh, YouTube asked this question: How do you know when a piece is done? There's a line in the movie Pollock and Ed Harris, you know who who directed and produced, directed the movie and starred as Pollock and asked him, uh, the reporter asked him, how do you know when a painting is, is finished? And, and this is actually an excerpt from the actual interview with Jackson Pollock. And Jackson Pollock said, how do you know when you are finished making love? You just know. I also think what B Pablo Picasso said is that no work is really finished it's only abandoned and there's a certain amount of truth there too i think i think willie we can definitely go into a painting and we could or drawing and we can work on it forever i really think so but they get to a certain point where you learned what you want you learned what you wanted to learn from it and also you said what you wanted to say and at that point you know you can call it done because you want to get on to the next one, I think. And I think that's probably uh, what we need to do. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this eye. I love this DSLR. It really, it really is a game changer as far as teaching. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this. Extreme close up. No, okay. Let's see. So next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how I could set up projects. And this is something that is available to everyone. I think I'm going to start it in a couple of weeks. So give everyone, thanks, Wendy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up something where for a very low fee, I will send you a projected drawing, a line drawing, just a line and so everyone could follow along and whatever supplies you need whether you need a mechanical pencil you can't get a uh, pastel or one of these erasers or the stumps I'll send that with it as well so we'll send that to you and when everyone has the art supplies we can go ahead and start the live streams but the thing is the live streams are going to be you guys are going to be drawing with me so we're going to be doing it together and then we're going to be we'll go ahead and and put that on my my blog and we we'll, if you want we could show the drawings together and just very exciting and I think that's going to be something that everyone is going to learn how to use along with me that's the best way to teach it's the best way to learn is that if I'm showing you guys how to do it and you're watching me then you go do it while you're watching me I think the learning curve will just explode I think you guys will really get this really fast you're all so talented and I'm gonna keep it on YouTube so you'll be able to see it and so that would be very good so you can always go back on YouTube and go over it again and uh, so so definitely you'll get one of these papers you know the exact paper I'm using and any supplies you don't have and it'll just be a nominal fee and once everyone has the information the drawing and everything will start and it'll be great it'll be a lot of fun something that I wish I had when I was starting out uh, you know back in the 80s Let's see if I, oh, look at that. So see, we do these little, little eyelashes here. Just at the very end.
go. You give that real feeling of kind of watery eye. And there's a lot more detail, but we don't want to go too crazy with the detail, right? Oh, that's great. We can definitely, Hector, we could work that out and I could send you the information to Chile. It wouldn't take too long. We'll actually wait for you to, you know, go ahead and get that, get that drawing, uh, get that drawing materials and the, the paper. So we definitely could work together, Hector. And I think it would be a lot of fun and I'm just excited to see what everybody's going to do. So I think, you know, if you do it, we could definitely, uh, you know, I can definitely send it airmail and you would get it within a week. But I'm going to actually, next week I'm going to have all the information and how to do it and, you know, all the secure information and then we'll really get this ball rolling. And then if it's a success, that's how we're going to do these live feeds as, you know, every week doing part of a lesson a project together and what I also want to do is I also want to make sure that we move on over to uh, move on over to pastel so you know we're going to graduate to color which is going to be great But uh, now, Willie, that was a very good question. Uh, how do you know when a drawing or painting is finished? It's really hard to tell. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm never finished, that I just, I learned something and I want to uh, do better on the next piece. One of the things I always, always, uh, always warn against is make sure that you don't move too fast in a drawing or a painting that you solve the problems uh, throughout the work so let's say this hand right uh, let's say I'm working on this hand and you know I have a lot more work to do but I say oh forget about it and I just work on everything and leave that hand that way that's something we don't want to do we want to we can leave it for another time uh, when we're working, but we always want to make sure we treat the hand uh, with the same uh, attention. Not necessarily the same amount of detail, but the same attention as importance in the, the, the whole. Exactly. Grow like an oak, not like a pine. Very cool. That's a very good analogy, Jacob. Thank you. And, you know, I'm just so excited we can start doing things like pastel, uh, pastel projects together. So have, has everyone uh, looked into my, my book that I'm doing online, which is my very own technique in pastel? It's very exciting. I actually kept that a secret for many years. But, uh, you know, I found out through copyright laws that once I do go ahead and put it in a blog that it is copyrighted so when, if a company an art supply company uh, was going to steal my idea they would actually I'd be able to sue the pants off of them so that's good sue the pants off them for a lot of money and not only that uh, you know once I put it in the blog and my technique and I do find that you know a company is using my technique for for their benefit and for profit then I could definitely ruin them uh, with bad publicity you know how bad does it look that an art supply company who sells work sells supplies to artists is actually stealing from artists right so that's really bad I'm gonna go ahead right now and do something very quick I'm going to uh, put my blog uh, address right there so it's just gonna be one quick moment let me see okay so here is my blog address 
And basically, it's the last couple of it's the last couple of posts on my blog, and it's dedicated. So I'm going to do it every day, uh, one not a chapter, but every day about 300 words of it, and this way everyone could follow along until uh, it's totally done. And then, of course, I'm going to publish it with a publisher. But I want my people to see it first because you guys support me and that's important to me definitely important to me so I'm just gonna go ahead and add text source text okay just very quickly put that in control V okay Okay, so now I'm just going to take that text and move it up. And I'll, I'll get that, I'll situate that in just one moment. Let's see. It's got to change the color because the color is. The color is white, and we're going to change it to blue. And also the size. I'm going to change the size here. Layout. Okay, I'll get that. I'll definitely get that address uh, on there for you. Let me remove this. Okay, now I think I'm cooking with gas. All right, now I think I have it. There we go. It takes me a while, guys, but I get it. So that's my, right there, that's my blog address, guys, Lisa, so you can see it there. And also, it's on the front page of my Facebook. But there, I'm up to day four. Tomorrow's day four of blogging my book. And it's of my very own technique in airbrush. This is something that I basically uh, invented. And it's uh, not airbrush, but in pastel. I invented and no one else is doing it. So basically it's just a sneak preview and also uh, not only a sneak preview, but putting it, uh, publishing on, on, on my blog so no one can actually steal it from me. I read this book called How to Blog a, How to Blog a Book and it was really very helpful. If you get a chance, uh, you know, if you like to write, definitely look into that. Now, what's interesting right here, it's a little dark, and I think that's going to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little more contrast in here. And I think that's going to help with some of the emotion in her eyes. Also, make you look at her eyes. What, what can we do? when we're drawing and painting. What can we do to direct the eye? How can we make the viewer look exactly where we want to look? So I'm probably going to come out with the book. The book will probably be published next year. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to self-publish or whether or not a book publisher is going to want to be interested in it. It's another reason why to do the uh, blog book because a lot of times if the if the book oh yes how to blog a book it's great i think it's uh nina amin is the the author and she's very good and you know what's interesting lisa the book how to blog a book she actually did that by blogging the book <laughs> i think that's pretty funny but 
it is good because she she's uh, working from experience on you know how to be successful doing that. Has have any of you out there thought of uh, writing a book, whether it be fiction or uh, something such as uh, a how-to or instructional, like uh, Lupita from the Cookie Channel? Uh, have you thought of that? Have you thought of uh, of doing the uh, maybe a book or a small book on on your cookie couture? Because I think that's something that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, how to and she wrote how to blog a book, and she did that by blogging. It's very cool. Oh, so Jacob, you're thinking of, uh, so you're just, uh, you're mentioning about the drawing, or are you thinking about maybe writing a book on those particular uh, topics in design? Oh, yes. No, definitely. Those are, that's exactly it, Jacob. Those are definitely amazing methods to direct the eye, and that's what you want. And I also want you to see, uh, you guys, how I switch from the different materials. And we're going to do that when you guys work together with me. You guys are going to be moving from this stump to this stump. You're going to be moving to your 0 0.5, to your 6B, to your... Uh, white pastel to your 0 0.3 so Wendy you ordered this drawer this one today right the uh, the Pentel graph gear 0 0.3 it's really good I don't use it too often but when I do need to it's so I'm so great that it's I'm so happy that it's there definitely oh you have so fiction that is really cool Oh wow! So you write a lot. You you write often. Is that correct, Lisa? So now that we mentioned the uh, this little zero point three, look, we can actually go and do some dark accents uh, in her forehead there. I like that. See, on this side we have some nice contrasts. So let's see if we could. Yeah, these Pentels are great. Oh, you haven't placed the order yet. Oh, cool. Oh, no, this is this is good. I Like I said, I don't use it too often, but it's so good to know that it's there. So that would be great. I hope you decide maybe to go ahead and blog a book. Oh, Hector, you always wanted to illustrate books for children. You know what? You can actually team up with somebody who is a children's book writer. And you can do that on the internet pretty quickly. And maybe you can be like a partnership. You know, your great artwork with their story. I'm sure they would be really excited about that, Hector. Oh, that is great. That is so fantastic. And this book, blogging, the book, uh, blogging a book is really helping because I'm doing it every day. Only a couple of, couple of paragraphs. But you don't want to do more than three to 400 words anyway. I do it on Microsoft Word, so I do all the color, color, all the uh, spell checks and grammar, and also it has a really good function, as you know, to tell you how many letters or how many words are in your post, and I just cut and paste it, but I also save it as the book, so I'm actually writing a manuscript as well as doing the blog. So you don't want to do, you don't want to write the blog straight on the blog, you know? You want to put it on Microsoft Word first then cut and paste on it. I use Blogger, but there's WordPress and a lot of other really good uh, blogging software out there that's free. Yeah, self-publishing is such a great idea. So, oh yeah, so we're going to go ahead and maybe pump up the contrast here just to catch up this eye with the other eye. So I'm going to take my 6B, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do cross hatching because I feel if I just go ahead and 
just straight in put in the tone I might overload it and it get too shiny so I'm just being a little careful about that so we can still do the cross hatching just as we did when we very first started this drawing way back when I think we started this drawing like what four weeks ago or was it yeah like four or five weeks ago so you guys really stuck with me so thank you Today was such a successful live stream. So many great people uh, have come and joined us uh, on Facebook and YouTube. I really feel blessed to have you guys. As you can see, I'm really working hard to make this eye stand out. Now, one thing that I can do, and I usually use it a lot, and you'll see the old masters do it very often, is that they'll put a dark accent right next to a highlight. Even if it's not there, they'll go ahead and and they'll accentuate that and that directs the eye and I'm just going to just do things that aren't there, that isn't there, to help direct the eye. Because we're not photorealists. I'm not a photorealist. Uh, I have no interest in being a photorealist. I mean, if the work does look that realistic while working out and trying to get pictorial, uh, you know, answer pictorial questions, pictorial questions, and have the picture look and say what I want to, and if it does look like a photograph, then that's cool but definitely just like the old masters their work is not uh, the goal is not to make it look as real as possible their goal is to make a work of art see remember what we did with the nose of the other drawing is that we put like a light next to it even though it's not there see that really nice light there that pushes that photo, uh, that pushes that, that nose forward. And that's what we want to do. Yes, you, you, wanna, you wanna say more. You wanna say a little bit more. And that's, that's when we steer away from photorealism and we go for a deeper meaning. I'll give you a case in point. My, my teacher, Harvey Dinnerstein, he said this when, he, when I was drawing the model. I was like 19 years old at the National Academy School of Fine Arts. And I was drawing and it was looking very, you know, very much like what I was looking at. And he said, now this is good to remember. He said, when you're drawing a person, you're drawing someone who's a unique person in all the world. Not to do a caricature, but what can you do and accentuate or really focus on what makes that person an individual, not only today, but of all of time. And when you have that in the back of your mind, then your work starts to have the, uh, the character, or you're going towards the character of, let's say, one of Rembrandt's drawings. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lisa. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate it. I love teaching you guys. It's, it's a passion of mine. I really do. I really feel that I, my time is best spent when I'm, when I'm teaching art. And one day I'm going to do it full time. And that's going to happen. 
and I know this channel is going to explode because you know what? It's it's geared towards not making money. It's geared towards you guys. It's geared towards you guys learning, making art fun, no matter where you live. You can live in, uh, you know, you can live anywhere. You can live in uh, Asia. You can live in Canada, South America. You could live and still get that education, that art education that I had from New York City. You don't have to travel to New York to get it. And that's what makes me excited about this whole process. So right now my channel is a little baby channel, but it's going to grow. It definitely is going to grow once, uh, once everyone sees the difference of how our projects are and they're not geared to show everyone how good I am, but geared to show how good you guys can be. How, how, how amazing artist you are and I'm just trying to pull that out of you. Because I know I see it in you already. It's just getting you guys to believe in yourselves. Uh, that's, that's the most important thing. I remember I taught, I taught a class at the Osceola Center for the Arts when I lived in Florida. That was in Kissimmee. And I had some students and some of the students said, Tim, I learned more in one class with you than I have in all the art classes I took all my life. And that made me feel good. You know what it is? I'm just so passionate about this. And I think it's contagious. And you can't fake passion, right? You can't fake uh, the love of something. No matter what you do, you can't fake it. And uh, you can see that other teachers, they just don't love it. And they don't, it's not part of them. Okay, so I think we're very close, guys, to calling uh, this portrait of Angela complete. I might tweak it off camera a little here and there, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Before I go, let me just, this upper lip is a little, a little simplistic, so let's see if we can go ahead and uh, work on that before we go. Okay, so there's some variations of tone here. As you can see, a lot of times I don't, uh, I actually don't do cross hatching. Sometimes I just do this circular motion. Cover this with my hand. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stump dedicated to the white, and just like I did, remember before, I would take this stump here and with the graphite and I can just pull some graphite from here and then reposition it I can do the same thing with white and I want you to do that too so you can just you know pull up some white here and then you can just reposition it just like a paintbrush see that so just gently you don't want to in one area so you just move around pick up and then while you're doing that, you're gaining some nice texture in those white areas too, so. And then, oh, no, thank you, Wendy. That's so true, right? You just, uh, and Lisa, you guys just can't, uh, just can't fake passion. I agree so much. Just also, you know, pulling up that and repositioning it to give a little translucency. Make those lips feel like lips. And, you know, going back to what you were saying, Willie, you know, I could continue this forever, indefinitely. It's so true, I can just go on forever. 
Let me take this white pastel here and just very lightly. It's like a little bit of a highlight here. But doesn't that look much better? Just giving some depth to what was flat. And you know, if you can see, it's just very, very quietly, it starts to have that texture of, of the lip. But we're not photorealistic. We're not going in and doing every little crevice and, and every little... This is the way Rembrandt would do it. This is the way Vermeer would handle the, the lips. And last but not least, we are going to just do some of the dark accents and we can call, call our demonstration done. Ah, oh, look at that. See that little bit of dark accent right there, the separation between the upper lip and lower lip really just comes together. And you can see, like, even with this nostril here, it's not exact when we blow it up. But it does have that feeling of just been painted really quick, you know? Or drawn, uh, not drawn really quick, but drawn all at once. Like, it just happened. You know, I didn't do an eye, a nose, a mouth, but it all came together, as Angra said. Oh, Kiva, be careful with the storms, okay? Make sure you, uh, you know, get away from the phones and, and yes, so definitely just uh, be careful and I will talk to you soon, okay? Thank you so much for stopping by, Kiva. Wow, that's scary. Got some big storms out there. Not good at all. Okay, guys, so... Let me go ahead and pull it out. So I think we can actually go ahead and call this one done. Let's see. We'll go ahead and sign this. So you guys were part of it. You've seen it from the very beginning and I'm going to go ahead and put that on my Facebook channel and call it done. So we did a good job and uh, thank you everyone for following me and, and uh, going over this together. So it was just really great. So I hope everyone has a great Wednesday. Check out my, my blog here. You know, check that out. The and uh, and I'm gonna do that every day and just go over the book together. So I hope hope you guys enjoy that. So next week we're gonna start a quick. We're gonna do a quick tutorial, but we're gonna I'm actually gonna roll out so how we can actually do the projects together within like maybe two or three weeks. So so we can get everyone on board. We can get Hector on board, Lisa, Natalie, Wendy. Uh, you know everyone Jacob you know whoever wants to go ahead and I think it's it's great I think it's groundbreaking as far as as live streams go and teaching methods so it's really really exciting uh, and thank you Wendy always fantastic to talk with you and uh, Jacob Lisa Willie's Hector Letty, if you're still there, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You uh, really made me smile by and coming aboard. And Cheryl, Raul, uh, Jacob, of course. He's always very, very helpful. And, you know, I love his comments. And everything is really, really... A, a, this is like one of my most successful live streams tonight. It was really very exciting. So, so I got a haircut tonight, looks halfway decent, but 
definitely need hair products. So I'm also going to do part six of uh, painting the portrait and airbrush. That's going to be very exciting. So uh, and everything. And during the week, I'll do some uh, some live streams. You know, uh, just like impromptu live streams. That would be really cool. So. Oh, thanks, Willie, for that. Thanks for that vote of confidence. I appreciate it. So have a great night, guys. We went over a little bit, an hour and a half almost, but you guys are worth it. I will talk to you soon, definitely next Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Take care, guys.